In the Chapter 2 screencast, we're going to discuss debits and credits. This topic is often challenging to students who haven't uh, had previous accounting experience, so I hope that the screencast will be of some assistance to you in understanding how we use debits and credits in our accounting system. If you recall from the Chapter 1 screencast, we mentioned double entry accounting, and you've also seen that mentioned in your text and materials. The concept of double entry accounting is that each transaction, so each financial transaction, affects two or more accounts. It may affect more than two, but it's going to affect at least two accounts. So there's going to be at least two entries for each financial transaction in our accounting system. You'll often see through this class, and I continue to use these in my own practice, this tool called a T-account. And we use these T-accounts to analyze accounts and to represent ledger accounts. So let's take a look at how what a T account looks like. Looks like this, looks like a T, hence its name. Generally on the top of the T account you will see the name of the ledger account that we're representing here. On the left hand side under the T we would list transactions that are debits. All debit means is that it's listed on the left side of the T account. That's, that's all it means. And you'll often see DR representing just a shortcut name for debit. Likewise, on the right-hand side of the T account, we will list credits to the account. Credits are often abbreviated CR, so you will see CR instead of the full word credit. And credit means right side of the T account. So debits and credits, it just means the left or right side of the account. Doesn't mean good or bad. A lot of times students want to say, well, debits are you know, bad, credits are good. Not necessarily. It depends how they're used. So if you probably are familiar with debits and credits being used in other contexts, such as debit and credit cards. If you work at a bank, you use debits and credits. So they may be used in a lot of different contexts. In this case, for accounting purposes, debits are on the left, credits are on the right. And that's... That's what we mean with debits and credits. So let's take a look down here how we use debits and credits and how they affect our accounts. Debits actually increase assets, withdrawals, and expenses. An acronym we can use that might be helpful to us is AWE. A student actually shared this with me a couple years ago and many students have indicated it's been helpful for them to remember how to um, increase or what accounts to increase with debits. So assets, withdrawals, and expenses. Now in order to use this, you have to have a good working knowledge of what types of accounts are assets, withdrawals, expenses. And that will come with practicing the exercises and problems so that you know those without even having to think twice about them. So we know what accounts debits increase. So credits increase all other accounts, which are liabilities, owner's capital, and revenue accounts. Okay, so we're going to look here. Um, this is a diagram that I've used in classes over the years. It's kind of helpful to students to, as a quick reference, I encourage them to write this at the top of their paper when they're doing homework or other assignments. And after a while, it becomes second nature and you don't need to refer to it. But I think it's a good reference tool when you're just starting out. So as you can see, I've listed the expanded accounting equation up here on the first line. We've got assets equals liabilities plus owner's capital minus owner withdrawals plus revenue minus expenses. So that should be familiar to you as far as the accounting equation goes. So what I've done with each of these account types is to create a T account and to show which side increases assets in this case. So assets are increased by debits and they're decreased by credits. Let's just talk about an example. So an as example of an asset is cash. So if we're going to increase cash in our business, we would record a debit in the cash account. Think of like your checkbook. If we're going to decrease cash, then we would record a credit. Let's move over here to liabilities. Liabilities operate in the opposite way. We increase liabilities by recording a credit and we decrease them by recording a debit. Owner's capital looks like liabilities. 
debits decrease the balance, credits increase the balance. Owner withdrawals, remember that acronym up here, AW. Debits increase, credits decrease. Revenue, debits are going to decrease and credits increase. They're listed right here. And lastly, expenses. Debits increase and credits decrease. I know this is a lot of information and it might seem like a foreign language right now. If you will do the problems and do the exercises, it will become second nature to you, promise you. But it does take practice. You can't just learn this through osmosis. You really need to, to work with it. And the more you work with it, the, the more natural it will become, trust me. So let's talk about the normal balance of an account. You'll read about that in your text also. The normal balance of an account is on the increase side of the account. What I mean by that is the normal balance of an asset is a debit, for example. And let me take this a little further as far as what a normal balance would be. And why do we care? I continue to care when I'm preparing a tax return for a client. I will see, for example, if I see a cash account and I see that it has a credit balance in it, that causes me concern because that means that the account is overdrawn. Um, so that would be a you know, really direct reference. The account is overdrawn. Is there an issue? Well, maybe it really is overdrawn. That would be a bad sign anyway. But maybe there's a mistake that was made. So maybe there's a mistake on the books that is representing this as an abnormal balance. Likewise, over here in accounts payable, where we've purchased things on accounts and we're going to pay um, our vendors in the future, if I were to look at a client's books and I saw that there was a debit balance listed on liabilities, I would be concerned. That would tell me that we may have an overpayment um, situation or we may have an error. So I'm going to take a look at all those abnormal balances, whether they be debits or credits, and I'm going to uh, investigate those before I move forward and prepare the tax return because that tells me that I might have an error somewhere I need to correct. So that's really all a normal balance is. If you can determine what type of account you've got and you know where, what increases the account and what decreases the account, figuring out the normal balance is very easy because it's really just the increase side of the account. Okay, so using all this information, I thought it would be helpful to go through a brief example of account analysis to determine the journal entry that we need to do. You know, we've been doing um, up until this point kind of listing out the accounting equation and putting pluses and minuses in different accounts. Well, we're going to move into the formal accounting system uh, moving forward, and that means using debits and credits. So we're going to take a look at a transaction, do some analysis, and look at what the journal entry would be. So here's an example of a transaction. We provided $1,000 of services on account. So let's just take my business. I provide accounting and tax preparation to clients. Generally, I don't collect ahead of time. I, pro I do the services, I provide the services, I provide them um, the reports, the tax return, and then I send them a bill and they pay me fairly promptly. I'm fortunate in that respect. Um, so that would be an example of we provide $1,000 of services on account. So the customer is going to pay us at some point in the near future, we hope. So first step, what are the accounts and the account types affected? So we're providing services, so revenue would be affected, and that's an equity account, we remember from our accounting equation. Also, accounts receivable are affected. Accounts receivable are an asset, and remember, when we provide services and don't yet get paid for them, we're going to record that as an account receivable. Once we get paid, then we'll zero out that account receivable and record the receipt to cash. But for now, we're just recording $1,000 of services on account. So we've identified the accounts and account types affected. Next, we need to determine how these accounts are affected. In this case, revenue increases $1,000. We're receiving income for these services we provided. And accounts receivable also increases $1,000. We've increased the amount that other people owe us. Okay, so with that, we can then prepare a journal entry. 
the entry we would debit accounts receivable $1,000 and we would credit revenue $1,000. If I were going to represent those up here and say this asset T account represents accounts receivable, I would record the entry here in the debit column. Remember, an asset is increased with a debit to the account. So that's how we know to record a debit in accounts receivable. We know accounts receivable is an asset. We increase assets with a debit to the account, so we're going to debit AR, and then we'll credit revenue $1,000 because we're increasing revenue. And in this case, we have a balanced journal entry. Remember, debits need to equal credits for each transaction. That's the same thing as keeping our accounting equation in balance. It means exactly the same thing. It's just the way we use that in our formal accounting system. So you always want your debits to equal your credits. You can have more than two line items listed, but your debits always have to equal the total of your credits. Hope this has been helpful, and we'll talk about future topics in subsequent screencasts.